in the words of the great Iceman himself. You have to be fast on the track. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. And today we're going to be covering three essential tips to help you get faster on the track. Before we start, I want to give a big thank you to all of our subscribers and frequent viewers of all the videos on the channel. Your support means so much to us and it's what helps keep us going. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and welcome to Full Tilt Bike Co. We do a lot of videos just like this one, along with some custom builds and all types of other stuff. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can stay up to date when we're dropping new content all the time. But enough of that, let's get into the three tips to help you be faster on the track today. All right, let's get straight into tip number one, which is keeping it smooth. Nothing kills speed like a mistimed pump, a bonk, a case, or any type of mistake that you're making out there on the track. Now, what do all three of these things have in common? They're a result of not being smooth on the bike. While these errors may not seem like a huge deal on the surface, those couple of hundreds of seconds that you're losing on these small inefficiencies add up to being the difference between first place and not first place. Everything on a BMX racetrack is there to help you generate speed. We wanna focus on keeping things smooth and using every ounce of the track to gain as much speed as we can. But how do we do that? Well, that'll bring us into tip number two. Tip number two is start slow. While this may seem counterintuitive as a racers and the whole goal of this sport is to go as fast as you can, when it comes down to practice and fine tuning mechanics, the best thing that you can do is slow things down. So this way you're more aware of the mistakes that you're making and ways that you can improve. So what does that mean? Go out to the track and go as slow as possible. Well, let's help put this into perspective for you a little bit by providing you a couple examples. When it comes to pumping, one of the best ways to improve your technique is to enter a rhythm straight away or a section with a lot of jumps with as little speed as possible and only using pumping, try to gain as much speed as you can. When done correctly, you'll be exiting the section at a much higher speed than what you entered it at. This is through your proper technique of pumping using each lip and backside to generate as much speed as possible. If you enter the straightaway at a full speed sprint, you could still maintain that speed, but you're not necessarily gaining speed. And the same thing can be said when it comes to manualing. While generally it's best to learn how to manual on flat ground first before taking it to the track, you can also go to the track and try manualing some of the common jumps as slow as possible. This will actually make the process of manualing a bit more difficult for you as you have to keep your front wheel up for a longer period of time, seeing as you're going slower. If you were to, again, just go 100%, a lot of times you can kind of cheat by using your speed to carry you across those smaller jumps quicker. If you wanna get better at manualing those bigger jumps or more technical jumps, go back to the jumps that you manual all the time and hit them at a slower speed. Continually doing this process is only going to make you better and more efficient at manualing when you get back to 100% speed. When it comes to jumping, it's a little bit trickier as you can't really go slower to jump a pro section or a triple jump or just a really big jump in general. There's a certain amount of speed you need in order to even attempt a jump. However, that doesn't mean that you can't still use this technique. A common thing that we like to do is have some of the riders try to jump smaller jumps at the track with as little speed as possible. Most of these jumps can be found on the last straightaway at a track, but basically find a small jump and see how slow you can go while still being able to clear the jump. This will force you to pop more and just get a better understanding of the fundamentals of jumping. Then you can take your newfound skills and give that pro jump or big triple you've been staring at a go. All of this to say, when it comes to trying to improve your track speed, one of the best things that you can do is slow things down. We wanna focus on proper mechanics. Yes, you're going to be going slower for that session, but as a result, you're going to be going faster in the long run. Slowing things down makes things more apparent and makes mistakes more obvious. You should be able to operate the bike smoothly, which again, will bring us into tip number three. Tip number three is work with the bike. This tip ties the two previous points into one. It's a common misconception that in order to be fast, you have to be strong enough and capable to muscle the bike around and throw it where you needs to go. While this is true on a certain level, it's not as black and white as it seems. In reality, that's not really what you want at all. You wanna make sure that you're working with the bike and that the inputs are nice and smooth like we talked about before and solid in technique. If you look back to tip number two, when you're going through those drills, you'll notice that it's not much strength that you're using, but rather finesse to generate all of that speed. When you bring things up to the higher level, the same thing applies. You want to be working with the bike and staying nice and smooth. 
A lot of times where you'll see mistakes happen is when someone's trying to make the bike do something that it doesn't want to do. If you take a rider like Corbin Shira or the previously mentioned Iceman, Joris Dalde, watching them ride the track, it almost looks effortless. They could be whole shotting the Olympics or a high level World Cup, and it looks like they're just on a Wednesday night gate practice full lap. Why is this? It's because they're focused on smooth, consistent inputs on their bike, and they're working with the track and the bike as well taking advantage of the things that it's giving them and being aware of the things that they're not able to do. When it comes down to working with the bike, usually it's a result of bad timing. If the bike's not doing what you want, like let's say it's catching air when you're trying to pump a steep lip, usually that's because the timing of your input is off. You might not be pushing down at the right time or you might not be picking up the bike enough. It's not necessarily that you aren't strong enough, it's more that your technique is slightly off. So at the end of the day, while it is very important to be a strong athlete in BMX racing, when it comes to track speed alone, you really wanna focus on finesse, proper timing, and just smooth inputs all around. So let's summarize the three tips that we learned real quick. First and foremost, keep it smooth. Second. Start slow and build your technique from there. And third, always work with the bike. If you do all three of these things during your next track session, you're sure to see improvements in your overall track speed. But let's not stop there. Let's do a little bit of a bonus and talk about some specific drills that you can take to your next skate practice. First and foremost is gonna be a pump lap. This is usually often overlooked as not really a workout, but more of a warm up routine. But man, if you do a couple of these in a track session, it's almost as hard as doing full laps. Now, what exactly is a pump lap? Just as the name suggests, it's basically where you do a full lap around the track, but you're not allowed to pedal. You can set different types of rules for yourself, like pedaling to the 30 foot line, or maybe pedaling to the first jump, but the goal is to use as few pedal strokes as possible while generating speed and carrying speed all the way to the finish line. This ties back into tip number two, where you're kind of starting slower to get faster. A pump lap is gonna force you to work with the track and use all of the jumps and turns to gain as much speed as possible. Now, when you go back to racing your local night and you're allowed to pedal, you're really gonna notice how much more speed you're able to generate through those rhythm sections, and it's gonna help your overall lap time drop. If you wanna see pump laps at the highest level, you should really check out this guy, Michael Bias. He's been making a buzz on the internet for doing full pump laps on supercross tracks. That's right, he's jumping berm jumps jumps, pro size, and eight meter hills without taking any pedals. It's pretty insane. He's applying the same tactics as we just discussed today. So if even the top guys are doing it, that means that we should probably be doing it as well. Another drill to help you improve your overall track speed is single straightaway efforts. Single straightaway efforts is basically when you attack one straightaway at a time. So let's say that you're having trouble with the rhythm straights and you find yourself always getting passed down that third straightaway. During your next session, find a way to start at the turn right before it and basically just sprint into that straightaway and only work on that one section of the track. Breaking down the track into sections like this will help you not only learn the track more, but also get a better feeling of how your bike handles. This comes back to breaking things down, slowing things down a little bit and dissecting them one by one. You can also use the pump lap method here by entering that straightaway slower if there's a lot of jumps and then again trying to generate the speed off just pumping manualing or jumping all by itself the next drill you can do is called a half lap and just as the name suggests you're basically picking two straightaways and attacking them at a time this will help you work on each straightaway individually but also give you a chance to dial in your cornering skills as usually the turn is going to be connecting the two straightaways so now you'll get a chance to break down those jumps while also finding different lines same theory applies here as with the single straightaway you can do this at different speeds, try different lines through it, but most importantly, get your reps in out there. The reason I like the half lap and single straightaway effort so much is because while full laps are really great for training, they're also really tiring. So while you may only be able to do four or five full laps in a two hour session or however long it may be, a half lap and single straight effort means you can get a lot more repetition throughout a training session with not as much fatigue. And then finally, this is just a bit of a fun one, but play a game of bike with your friends. One of the best ways to progress is by riding with friends and having you guys push each other. A game of bike kind of works like a game of pig with basketball where basically each person calls out a line everyone else in the following order has to do that same line so as a common example someone enters a rhythm section and they'll go manual manual jump manual the people behind them will have to do that same exact line if they get it they're safe if they don't then they get a letter first person to spell bike 
is out. It's a really fun way to work on your skills and challenge yourself. And at the end of the day, it's a game, so it's fun. And that's really what BMX racing should be. It's partially work, but if you're not having fun, there's no reason to do it. That's kind of the goal of all of these drills. Hopefully these drills can make finding track speed less intimidating and more of a fun process for you. But really the options are endless. You can do all types of modifications to the drills that we just listed out today. So if you have something that we didn't mention, be sure to let us know down below and we can share your comments with the community. But that's it guys. That's three tips to get you faster around the track today, along with a couple bonus structured drills. Really hope that you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out some of the other custom builds and stuff that we've been doing. As always, let us know what you think and let us know what you want to see from us next. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Dude, I already know the hardcore Minnesota fans are going to love this site. Dude. Logan Matson, back on a bike. Who would have thought? It has been Dude. too long and I am dying. How'd it go? Pretty well. It's just my legs are not keeping up. <laughs> Realistically, <laughs> when's the last time that you rode a bike? Like how many months ago? Like actually rode yeah. like over two years ago, <laughs> but I've done like some one races every like few months, but we're, we're toasted right now. Some people will call him Mr. 249. Yes, still oh. haven't got that last <laughs> one yet. <laughs>